John Wick Chapter 4 is releasing in March this year, and we finally have a new trailer that gives us a better look at how the fourth sequel of the Gun Fu franchise will pan out. And we speak for every John Wick fan when we say that 2023 will be a great year for the franchise. So today, we're going to reveal the small details you probably missed in the trailer and discuss our theories about Chapter 4, starting off with sides being chosen. About halfway through the trailer, John Wick walks up to a table outside in Paris, where the Eiffel Tower can be seen in the background. There, he sits down across from the Marquis de Gramont, played by Bill Skarsgård, to talk about the terms of a deal that seems to free Wick from the high table's pursuit if he can beat the Marquis in a single fight. During this short scene on the Marquis' side of the table, Winston is behind Wick, and we can also see Donnie Yen's cane. We think this arrangement gives us a look at what seem to be the two main groups in the next chapter of John Wick. Winston backs Wick, even though it looks like his old friend betrayed him at the end of Parabellum. At the end of the trailer, Wick fights Kane, suggesting that their fight might happen near the movie's end. But given that Kane was with the Marquis earlier in the trailer, it's likely that this fight with Kane is directly related to Wick's freedom being on the line in the bigger fight with the Marquis. Next up, seems like Winston and John are on good terms? In the last scenes of Parabellum, Winston, who had been the main character's friend for a long time, shoots him from a balcony. The owner of the Continental wanted to keep his power, and he couldn't help a rogue assassin who was being hunted by all of the High Table's men. So he makes a deal with the Adjudicator, played by Asia Kate Dillon, which leads to John having to fall. But in the trailer, John and Winston are talking politely, which suggests that John has forgiven his old friend for his mistakes. At the same time, Winston might not have meant to kill everyone's favorite dog-loving assassin to begin with. Also, Winston wasn't surprised at all when the adjudicator told him that John had survived the attack in question. So did he and John have a plan that only they knew about? Well, Ian McShane is returning for the ballerina spin-off. So what we saw in the trailer shows that Winston and John are probably getting along. What's more, are Winston and the Bowery King aligned? At the 103 mark in the trailer, it looks like the calm and composed Winston and the always cool Bowery King are getting off a subway train. And this is one of the most interesting parts of the trailer, as both of these characters help John on his journeys. But they don't really hang out together. It also seems to imply that they're together Together, and might even be working together somehow, but the short glimpse only shows the Bowery King leaving. So it's really hard to tell what is going on. Are they going to meet in secret? Maybe because John asked them to? Could there be a reason why Winston is following the Bowery King? Or are both characters secretly crazy about crocheting? And this is the only way they can meet and play colorful hacky sack without losing face in the tough world they live in. It's probably not the last one. But there's always hope until more trailers or the movie show what their journey is all about. Followed by John's family sitting at the high table. In the John Wick series, the mysterious organization called the High Table runs the secret world of assassins and organized crime. Even though each movie shows a different part of this hidden world, the High Table is considered the most important group, and their word is essentially law. In Chapter 3, Parabellum, we saw Wick trying to clear his name after killing a member of the High Table on neutral ground, which is a big mistake in the eyes of this organization. And because of what he did, John Wick is considered to be incommunicado, and a large bounty has been put on his head. After his big finish in Parabellum, Wick gets away from the High Table, but it looks like he'll still have to deal with them in Chapter 4. 
for, but the trailer shows that his family sits at the high table, which is quite shocking. This could mean he has a sibling or parent who is this powerful, or it could be a reference to the Belarusians from Parabellum. This may also be the reason why John has been able to survive so many times, despite seemingly impossible odds. Either way, it looks like a new element has been added to the John Wick mythos, and it'll be interesting to see if this new Wick family member or group at the high table is a friend or foe. Not to forget the welcome Matrix nod. Even though the trailer is full of chaos, mystery, and nail-biting thrills, it breaks the tension with a cute nod to one of Keanu Reeves' most famous roles. A minute into the trailer, Wick, who has just put on his clothes, says to the Bowery King, who Lawrence Fishburne plays, I'm going to need a gun. The camera then cuts to Fishburne's underworld boss, who smiles at the hitman. We all remember Reeves and Fishburne first appeared together in The Matrix in 1999, and in the movie, Reeves, who plays Neo, the chosen one, asks for guns. A lot of guns. The short line that Reeves' character Neo said has come to be associated with The Matrix, a movie that partly inspired the John Wick series. In the late 1990s science fiction movie, Chad Stahelski played Reeves' stunt double. Later, Stahelski would be in charge of the martial arts stunts for the two Matrix movies that came out right after the first one. And after doing stunts for more than a decade, Stahelski decided that directing would be his next challenge. So he got Reeves to play the title role in the 2014 movie John Wick. Well, ain't that special. In the second movie in the series, Fishburne, who played Morpheus, joined the bad world of contract killings. And now, all that's left for the Matrix trilogy to be complete is for Carrie Ann Moss to show up in the John Wick franchise. Also, the exact same quote from The Matrix was used in Chapter 3, Parabellum. Not to get our hopes up or anything, but who knows how many times the Wachowskis' groundbreaking sci-fi franchise will be mentioned in Wick's fourth adventure. Moving on to fascinating theories about John Wick, Chapter 4. First off, a sequence in Berlin. We think a big fight scene is set to happen in Berlin, since they've been filming there, but it's unlikely that the whole movie will take place place in Berlin. Instead, it could be a short scene like John's trip to Rome in Chapter 2 and then to Casablanca in Chapter 3, Parabellum. In fact, the crew didn't just go to Germany, they also went to Japan and France, where they shot scenes for John Wick 4. And now, the world of the franchise has grown a lot with Parabellum, and it looks like the fourth movie will grow it even more. On top of that, fans are also waiting for three more spin-offs based on the European Continental Hotels. Coming up, John Wick killing Winston. At the end of Parabellum, we all remember Winston shooting Wick in a shocking way on top of the Continental. Well, we think that the main character will try to get revenge in Chapter 4, and that John Wick will try to kill Winston. Another idea is that Winston and John set up the whole scene on the rooftop as a last-ditch effort to stop the high table. But if Winston really wanted to kill John, he would have shot him in the face. But instead, he shot him in the one place where John could still live. And because of this, it's kind of too soon to say what will happen between the two old friends. Not to mention, he'll reunite with his family. People don't know much about Wick's family because they know that his wife died and that he grew up in the Ruska Roma crime syndicate. Well, a theory suggests that Wick might have a close family that hasn't been shown yet. And this is supported by the fact that the killer might have a long-lost brother from jail. The theory sounds a little too fast and furious to us, since that was exactly what F9 was about. Also, this seems unlikely, because there's never been a police officer in a movie, except for the one at the beginning of John Wick. Who knows what Wick does for a living? So it's unlikely that anything will be about prison. Up next, 
Charon, becoming much deadlier. In the first two movies, Charon was just the concierge at the Continental Hotel, and he seemed completely harmless. But in Parabellum, we saw him in action, and he knows how to use weapons just as well as the main character. We think that in Chapter 4, the concierge will be even more eager to pull the trigger than he was in the third movie's last act. On top of that, Charon could be even more dangerous, because the front desk guy could be a lot deadlier than he showed us in the third chapter. Last but not least, the Elder will use the ring in an inventive way. While fans believe Wick will seek vengeance on the Elder and get his ring back, others think the opposite. A fan theory suggests that the Elder will use the ring against Wick, as the Elder will melt JW's ring make a bullet out of it, and appoint someone to kill him with it. Which is a wild one to begin with. Yes, the move sounds so ridiculously over the top, but it also sounds like something that could very much happen in a John Wick movie. But again, a fifth movie has been greenlit, so there's no way the plan will be successful even if this happens. So, let's see what does happen. That's all for this video. Do you have any theories on what will happen in John Wick Chapter 4? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.